Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. Um, the third one I'm recording in a row today, so just bear with me if my voice starts to just fade out towards the end of this one as well. So, many of you requested this, and I was kind of on the on the fence about doing it, because I've never really done this sort of thing before. Um, about, since we're 10 years into this save, let's go and have a look and see what the other leagues have been doing in that period, and the Champions League, and the ward winners, and all this sort of stuff, and just sort of see what's going on in the world outside of Greenland, basically. So, that's what we're going to try and do today. Um... Don't mind me if I have to keep taking a drink. Unfortunately, when you've been recording a, for two hours straight of actually speaking like this for two hours straight, things start to get a little bit tense in the old throat. So, um, we're going to go through the leagues first. This is what I've currently got turned on. I'm turning on the third league in Germany uh, for the next season because obviously 1860 is our affiliate club and I believe they're in that league. So, I want to make sure that they're actually generating regens. That way we can poach them and whatnot. So, we'll start. Actually, tell you what. Let's just start in Denmark, shall we? And take a little look at what the lower league... Wow, we're actually the third major club in Denmark these days. That is insane to think. Um, and look, both of our, both of the major transfers for Denmark are both about us as well, which is really, really... It's quite sweet, isn't it? So, looking at the Division 1 sort of situation, we'll just take a quick gander at kind of what's been happening lower down the Danish league, see if there's any interesting... I'm more interested in actually this division because we t tend to really take a little look at the other one a lot. Um... <clears throat> What I'm more interested in is the lowest tier. So there's Marion Lee struggling in the third tier. I remember we played them, well, every week basically in the second flight. And then again, so many, a lot of these teams ring a lot of bells in that sense. So what about the relegation stage? How are we doing there? This did, wow. Some of these some of these names bring back some memories, that's for sure. Uh, anyone random been in here? We can't really find out that easily. Um, Nisha being of one, a couple of, where are they? I didn't remember seeing them, unless they're in the second tier now. Um, is there any rando teams in this league as well? Ah, there they are, yeah. Uh, getting relegated with Yamabukt. Okay. Nestved, Frem, Helsinger, uh, Shellerup. They never quite managed to get out of the league. It's a shame. I always feel like they, they came close a few times. Sunios got back up again in our league next year, despite having the worst goal difference of the top three. Uh, some of these teams have had some damn good seasons and probably won't go up. Then again, uh, they have to play against AC Horsens, who are absolute bobbins. So there is that as an option. Anyway, let's move out of Denmark now and over to one of the other leagues. I'm going to use this menu each time uh, to actually do this bit, just so it's just easier. So look at the Premier League. This is going to be an interesting one. Now, I didn't turn this on until... Ooh, actually, I don't know. You, you, you'll see when I turned it on. Uh, we can see how far we go back in it. So, yeah, I turned it on at 22-23. So we'll go back to there. Man City won it. What a huge surprise with Villa, Leeds, and Swansea being relegated from it. Um, not a huge surprise there either. I don't suppose we're going to see too many huge surprises. City won it again. 96 points. Um, that is some, God, God, Man United lost the league title with 89 points. Chelsea had 87 points and came third in the league. Imagine that. Brighton relegated. Sunderland relegated. Middlesbrough got 16 points. Trying to break a new record there, apparently. Um, Man United won it with 91 points the next year. Uh, anyone random? Brentford were in... Well, we're relegated. Uh, wow, Brentford got 16 points and still didn't finish bottom because Burnley got 15 points. I find that the league tends to do this after a while. The, the, the gap between top and bottom gets so bizarrely huge. 98 points for Manchester United that year. Brighton bottom with West Ham and West Brom. Uh, no huge surprises, though. And this season, uh, Chelsea came top. Man City, wow, well, Chelsea actually won it with nine, wow, huge gap there. Um, Leicester qualified, Huddersfield, Brentford, and Leeds go down. Um, interesting. Okay, let's take a little gander at the championship while we're here. We don't want to see the playoffs. We'll be able to tell from the league who's gone up and whatnot. Um, West Brom will promote, hang on, we'll go back to where we were. So Watford have been promoted, Huddersfield, Hull City, Rotherham, and Blackburn went down. Well, I'm more interested in the bottom of the league, really, because we already know who went up because they were relegated from the Premier League the following season most years. Uh, Wigan, Ipswich, and Doncaster going down that year. Okay. Um, wow, Brentford actually won the league. Norwich, Peterborough, well, Norwich and Peterborough, and Sheffield United went down. Any rando clubs in this league? I didn't see any. Um, Birmingham, QPR, and Wigan went down. Fulham not having a good time. They don't seem to do that well on FM. It's a shame. Model it better. Derby, Norwich, and Rotherham go down. Uh, but they've not got, like, stupidly low points tallies, like you see sometimes in these saves. So that's kind of it for England, really. Um, the other ones will have been on a little bit longer. I've kind of flipped the leagues around quite a lot. Um, so that's why there's not quite so much data available. We can still show you the winners, though, I think. Um, should be able to see it on this right-hand side here. If, there we go. So, oh, that's the championship map, you absolute nincompoop. So Man City with three... Man United, Chelsea, Man United, Chelsea, Chelsea, Leicester. So they've shared it between the three of them. Uh, Arsenal, Liverpool, Spurs, nowhere to be seen, I, I guess. Um, Dybala still playing. Wow, he must be fairly elderly by this point. 30, 
33. He's only 33, I suppose. Harry Kane still putting in good performances. And a guy here who is a real player, um, Andrea Pinamonti. He's still only 28 years old. Good grief. Um, Inter fans, this guy might be one for the future. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so that's the Premier League. That's how things are currently shaping up over in England. Looking at the ad removed leagues, let's switch over to League Ugh and League Duh and see how they've been going over this period. I don't know how long I've had these leagues turned on or not, so we'll see. Uh, how long have I had France on? Same sort of length of time, really. Um, but I imagine it's a fairly straightforward PSG win it every year. Nope. Holy shit. Monaco got 105. Right. In a 38 game season. Paris Saint-Germain got 100 points and did not win the league. They actually got the same number of goals scored and against as Monaco, but Monaco got 105 points. Um, Nancy and Lorient went down. That is insane. What if there's only more seasons like that? Not only that, Lyon got 82 points in, in third place there. That is a very top-heavy league, that's for sure. Monaco then won it the next year. They've really turned into a beast. Reem, uh, uh, Guingamp go down with Brest. Uh, Monaco win it again. Lave and Lons go down. I'm sorry, I'm not butchering the voice, I'm sure. Uh, PSG finally go and win one. Uh, Sosho and Strasbourg go down. Wow, 10 points for Strasbourg. That is embarrassing. Um, PSG win it again. Ange, uh, Angers and Montpellier go down. No huge surprises there, I suppose. Actually, Montpellier. And this season, Paris Saint-Germain with 99 points have won the league again. Those two just battling it out, basically. It's basically like us and... Uh, and uh, what's the other team that we're talking about? SD Copenhagen. Yeah, there you go. Nancy, uh, Cannes, and Amiens uh, also go down that season. Okay, so, you know, a fairly as you would have expected from this league. I, I think there's really no huge surprises in it, to be honest. Uh, looking at the league table for the second tier in France, um, I I'm not going to dwell too long on these ones because I don't know enough about them to know if there's any huge surprises in here. But if you are a fan of French football, then do feel free to point out any particularly large uh, sort of surprises. Paris FC doing their thing, but not really doing that much of their thing. There you go. They came sick. That's not too bad, is it? Um, is that the best they're going to do? Yeah, they very nearly got relegated last season. And this year, they have just about survived. So that, that's good for them. We'll quickly nip back up to the top of this page so we can see who won the other leagues um, in France over this period. So, uh, yeah, as we would have expected, Paris Saint-Germain loads. Monaco, which is a real life one, I expect. Yeah, uh, Paris Saint-Germain won it loads. Monaco won it loads. Paris Saint-Germain won it loads. Hmm. not really a huge surprise there, to be fair. Uh, I'm Rick Laporte, actually, it's from Monaco now, which is kind of interesting. So let's move over to the next league on my little list. Don't worry, we're going to do like the main awards, like Ballon d'Or, World Cup, and stuff like that as well. Do not you worry about that. So Bundesliga, this video could end up being like half an hour long. I just realized this was going to be longer than I thought it was going to be. But hey, you wanted it, so now I'm providing it. Don't complain. Um, so stages in the Bundesliga. Uh, oh, I've had this, one even, had this one on even less time. So Bayern win it. What a massive surprise. Um, Mainz and Augsburg go down. Next year, Bayern win it. Nuremberg and Union Berlin. Okay, that's kind of cool uh, to see them up there. Leverkusen, of course, won it um, last year, which is very, very interesting, uh, which might explain, I don't know, why Bayern was so angry. Uh, Ingolstadt, Frankfurt and Darmstadt. Wow, Darmstadt got nine points all season. Minus 70 goal difference. That is abysmal. And this season, well, wow. Leverkusen, the defending champions, and got 57 points. Bayern once again did not win it. Uh, Stuttgart, Freiburg, and Kaiserslautern go down. But that is surprising. Bayern have sort of just, just a tiny little bit slipped off the edge of things a little bit over the past few seasons. So in the second tier, I'm mainly looking out to see how well St. Pauli have done in this period. So again, if you're an expert on German football and you notice anything crazy going on in these leagues, then do feel free to let me know in the comments. Mainz, of course, going up there. Soundhausen and Sunnerhof Groschepach. Apologies, I know I'm butchering them. It's difficult, all right? Um, and it Magdeburg, Dynamo Dresden, Duisburg. Uh, well, Dresden were up there then. So I wish that Pali would finally just get out of this league. Um, ideally, upwards. Um, Essen and Hansa Rostock. Okay, so nothing hugely surprising there, as far as I can tell. But that's fine. I assume that when we go to look at the other leagues, I think we already did this once before, we were able to see pretty clearly that Bayern had won it every single season until Leverkusen won it, and now Schalke have won it. So at least the German league is finally spreading out a little bit. It's dominated by regions, but Maximilian Meyer is still at Schalke, uh, which is kind of interesting. Not monitored. Oh, hello. That's Alexander Zinchenko, the Man City guy, or current Man City guy. I wonder if he's actually always been at RB Leipzig. No, he has been around the block a little bit, it would appear. 30-year-old Ukrainian. He has been to... Ooh, where has he been to? Been to Real Betis for free, and then signed for Leipzig two years later for 18 million. Nice one, City. Um, let's move along to 
La Syria. Right. Okay. That's fine. I think I might have had this one a little bit longer. Probably not because I'm going to regret this immediately. And one year. Good. Inter have won it. Spal, Brescia and Crotone have gone down. And this season, Milan have won it. Uh, Inter, Roma and Juventus came second. No huge surprises in there. Spezia in the top flight. Okay. Sassuolo relegated. Um... That's about all I can really show you on that one. I'm sorry about this. Um, some of these leagues I didn't turn on until we got back into Europe again because it didn't make any sense to do that. Uh, Carpi getting relegated again. I feel like they were... Weren't they a top flight side a few years ago? Benevento struggling down there as well along with Frosinone, Spal, uh, quite a few of these, I suppose. Catania, Empoli, all being relegated. Um, we can have a look at the proper thing, though, so we can see at least who's won the league in this period. Sorry about this. It's just That's just the way it is. Milan into Milan and then just Juve. Just Juve for days. Uh, Pietro Pellegri is the top league goal scorer. Not a huge surprise there. De Leva, That's the guy that um, I was marking out against uh, Fiorentina when we played them in the Champions League. So, okay, maybe I was right to do that since the guy has got 13 assists in the league this season. Udinese uh, qualified for the Champions League last year, but this year not quite so good on that front. Okay, so moving on from Italy over into... Where we go next? Let's go to Norway. This one might well have been on for a few years. I feel like this one's been on for a few years. So we might have a little bit more data to go with this time. There we go. It's a bit better. So Mulder have won it. Not a huge surprise. Rosenborg have won it. Um, Mulder have won it. Rosenborg have won Are they just alternating? Because one has to play in the Champions League each time. And as a result of that, they lose loads of like um, fitness levels and stuff. So let me guess. Mulder have won the next year. Oh! <gasps> What an odd result. Odd have come along and won it. I'm really hoping that someone like Arendal, uh, the team I managed briefly on a blog I did last year, uh, are in here too. That'd be kind of cool. I think they're in the second tier though. Oh, in fact, speak of the devil, there they are getting relegated from the top flight. Um, Mulder have won it. And anyone else? Mulder have won it. Okay, things start to get a little bit more sensible now at the top of the league. Uh, although Rosenborg at one point were doing quite well in the Champions League, if I recall. So then again, Norway do have... Or well, they certainly did have two champion, uh, have the automatic group stage spot. So maybe Mulder got it and got loads of money. Uh, Starbeck are currently winning it, but let's not read too much into that just yet. I'm sure Mulder will come out here, bring Scully with them, and everything will be just fine. Um, so that's all we've got really from the Norway situation currently. Uh, moving over to. Uh, let's go to Portugal. Let's see how my boys Uniao da Madeira are doing over in Portugal. Probably not in either of the top two flights. I think this league's been on for a while, so we should have a bit more from this one. Oh, my God. Matt, why? Why? Okay, so Benfica have... Wow, Benfica have won the league by 15 points over Sporting and Porto that season. Nacional and Penafiel uh, were relegated that year. The following season, Benfica win the league by 15 points over Sporting and Porto. What is going on? They are dominating. Uh, Gil Vicente and Tondela are relegated this time around. The next year... Benfica win the league by nine, nine points this time over Porto, but 30 points over Sporting Lisbon. Pacos Ferreira, this must have been when they were um, doing well in the Champions League or Europa League a few years ago. Uh, Fiorenza and Morirenza, I'm sorry for the pronunciations. If I had time to figure out how to say it, I would um, get relegated. And of course, last season, Benfica win the league by nine points this time over Porto and Braga. So Braga actually slip into a Champions League spot at the expense of Sporting Lisbon, who clearly seem to have been on the decline for a little while. Pedafail and Estoril. Ah, Estoril have a player called Toto, who I was kind of interested in signing, but they wanted a little bit too much money for him. And I just thought, ah, it's not worth it purely for the Africa jokes I could make. So there you go. Uh, Benfica have won the league this year by 15 points over Porto. And then, of course, over Braga. Uh, Belenense and Moriens are relegated as well. Pretty much your standard stuff there. Um, how did Uniao del Madeira... There they are. So they're up there. They're doing all right, I suppose. I assume they're just sort of bouncing around from top to mid-table to top to mid-table. That's kind of how they do things. One day I will manage them again. I really do want to bring them back the glory they once had. Uh, well, briefly. I, I, don't, I only managed them for three seasons in that save I always talk about, but it was the best thing ever. Oh, good Lord. So... Sporting win the league, and look at this, Benfica have just dominated it, absolutely dominated the Portuguese leagues to a absurd level. Um, but weirdly, despite that, no top scorer. This guy called Rui Felix is the top scorer, and he plays for Setubal? Hmm. And he's not even a proper striker, so there's that, I suppose. That's Portugal for you, folks. Let's take a look at... Spain. Oh, this could be an interesting one. Okay, let's go for La Liga. I assume it's going to have the same problems as many of these other leagues in terms of how long I've actually had the league turned on for. Oh, for goodness sake. Um, so Barcelona won the league. 
Real Madrid, Atletico and Sevilla in the Champions League spots. Girona, Gijón and Alaves relegated. And Atletico have won the league this year. That's not bad over Real Madrid, Barcelona and Sevilla. And down go Valladolid, Zaragoza and Getafe. Um, but we can still see who's won the other leagues. And that's kind of the key thing here. So La Liga, Atletico, Barca, Real, 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 Barca, Real, Atletico. The usual lot, basically, with Atletico smattering in a few little titles here and there, which is it's nice to see. Uh, what about the second tier? Who's won that a few times in this period? Deportivo, Las Palmas, Lugo, Alaves, um, Las Palmas, Malaga. Las Palmas seem to have won it a few times here. Celta Vigo, Ibar. Which means Ibar must have been relegated as well, which is actually a little bit surprising if you count me on that one. Okay, so yeah, um, this is the problem when you have to keep turning leagues on and off. Like, if you wanted to see what the MLS was doing, I'd be able to give you something on that one. That's the wrong button entirely. Um, right, let's go to add remove leagues. So, we, and the last one is Alsvenskan, the Swedish top flight. Um, this one I feel like has been on for some time. So we can, in theory, get probably a fairly large... There you go. I, I feel like maybe it's only remembering a certain number of leagues. Because I swear I had the Swedish league on the entire time. But there you go. So Malmö have won it a lot. Sundsvall, uh, Bromo Poikana, and Uster. Fair enough. Malmö win it again. Not a huge surprise. Gefle, Urgrit, uh, Advitabur. Doing, actually, no, Advitabur. That's the guys that we sent Hassan on to on loan. Wow. IFK nearly got relegated. Um, Don't do that, guys. Just, just don't do that. Um... And wow, they uh, okay, they bounce back a little bit. Bromo Poikana, um, Sundsvall there. Malmo winning the league again. I think pretty certain that Malmo have won it every single year, it would appear. No, they didn't. IFK Nurstripping did get a win in there. Kalmar and Halstad were relegated. What is going on with Jutebor? They a mid-table mediocrity from having won the league in 2017. It's baffling. I, I love this club. And I, I'm surprised they've done as badly as they have in this save. Malmo win it again there. Uster and Falkenborg go down. Gothenburg back back to where they were again. Malmö will win the league again. Not a huge surprise. Ustersund, wow, relegated. Bromo Poikana and R. Sodra get relegated as well. And then that's actually quite impressive that Norshipping have come and won a few titles. Then again, they look like a fairly solid side. It's just, it's interesting. That's all. Uh, Malmö comes second by a long way that year. And again, Jutebort nowhere to be seen. And so far this season, Hammerby are currently top. And the the usual situation has kind of resumed itself on this one. We'll just quickly check, see if anyone won it before. Uh, oh, Icor did win it then as well. And that's that's the real life league, isn't it? When um, IFK won it in real life. Um, so there's that. So that sort of wraps up the actual other leagues that we've kind of got access to. However, we can still take a look at the Champions League and Europa League. So we'll go with the Europa League first to see if, sort of see who's been winning it over the years. Um, if there's a way of... Uh, I can never remember how you get to... There's like a... Ah, we'll, we'll leave it. I think this one doesn't really matter. So we've had Barcel Barcelona losing the Europa League final to Bayer Leverkusen. That's interesting. Milan beating Fiorentina in the final. We've had... Oh, wait. I'm in Egypt. That's not what's happening at all. Right. Okay. Leverkusen did win the final. Liverpool um, were beaten by Fiorentina in the final. They were also beaten on penalties by RB Leipzig in the final. Spurs beat Auxerre in the final. Uh, RB Leipzig beat Sevilla in the final. Chelsea beat Milan in the final. Lyon won it over Arsenal. Southampton beat... Liverpool have lost three Europa League finals so far. Um, Liv <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, Liverpool fans. It's, what are they doing? That's like the four, four times Liverpool have lost the Europa League final now. Uh, Lyon beat Napoli 4-0 in the Europa League final and that is that is crazy how have Liverpool managed to lose the final four times in this period hey I'll tell you what let's hope they've won the Champions League in this period to actually sort of uh, keep things nice and sexy Man United beat Spurs in the Champions League final this season Milan beat Man City last year um, Real Madrid beat Monaco the previous year Real Madrid beat, Bo beat Monaco the previous year before that Monaco having a lovely time but they did win it the year before that so they've been in three successive finals there um, PSG Man City in the final. Uh, Manchester City beat PSG in the final. They also beat Juventus in the final. Atletico have won the Champions League. And Benfica... <gasps> no way! Sorry, that's actually quite exciting. Benfica have broken the curse of Bella Gutmann. That's, that's actually quite impressive. To be fair, for Benfica to win the Champions League in the first season of this save, they beat Real Madrid in the Champions League final. That is actually crazy. I've never seen that happen. That's in the 17-18 season. They actually won the Champions League in the very first season of this save. See, this is why we do videos like this. So we can find things like this and go, wow. And that's that's actually quite impressive. Um, 
we don't really care about the Europa Youth League or anything like that, do we really? Um, the coefficients you really know about. I talk about that loads in the videos normally. Anyway, uh, oh, I know what we could do. We could talk about the biggest transfers and see if there's any new boys in there at all. Uh, so future transfers, leading transfers. So we'll sort by V. Um, Mbappe's transfer to um, PSG is still in there, but that's the hard-coded one. But the one from PSG to Manchester City for 164 million, that is not hard-coded. That's from the game. Uh, Astibal to PSG, he played against us. I remember him. Uh, 124 million. Velasquez to Manchester, from Manchester United to PSG, 115 million. Dembele to PSG, 103 million. PSG just spending all the monies. Uh, Carrera from Dortmund to Bayern Munich. That's the guy that scored the goal in the first leg against us. Um, before we put seven goals past them. 102 million. Uh, a guy called Dean van Abeneni. No, Abeni. Uh, I'm guessing probably Dutch. With a name like Abeneni. Oh, he's Belgian. Okay, for oh, 22 years old. And they've signed him for 96 million. Arturo Prada. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any sort of smaller clubs on this list. But there doesn't appear to be. Uh, apart from Leicester City, really. Um, Sociedad. This guy's been on here for ages, though. He signed for Manchester United years ago. Um... This guy, Samir Abdullawi, from Leicester to Manchester United for £78 million. That is a lot of money, to be honest. I'm not going to lie, that is a lot of bloody money. Okay, so there's that. Um, what I'm going to want to show you now is the awards. So what have we got? How do we find out? Ballon d'Or. Here we go. Right. Ballon d'Ors. Um, yeah, we'll start with the Ballon d'Or. Where do we get to? So it would have been... 2018. So Griezmann actually won the Ballon d'Or ahead of Suarez and Gonzalo Higuain. The following year, Suarez won it ahead of Alexis Sanchez and Antoine Griezmann. No surprises there. The following year, Suarez won it again ahead of Messi and Neymar. Although Neymar was playing for PSG, of course. The following Lionel Messi won the Ballon d'Or at the age of 34 years old ahead of Eden Hazard and Robert Lewandowski, who would have been 33 years old at the time. That's actually quite impressive. A lot of oldies in here, apart from Hazard. Although he's 32, apparently. Um, not 32, 32, as in 30 as well. Um, Dybala won it ahead of Neymar and then Andrea Bellotti of Dortmund. Antoine Griezmann then won it ahead of a, the first region in the Juan Pereira of Manchester United. And Luis Suarez, still in there at 36 years old, got third in the Ballon d'Or. That's mental. Mbappe finally won it ahead of Andrea Pinamonti, the Chelsea guy, uh, and then Andrea Bellotti. And it's weird that it's taken Mbappe that long. Then again, he's still only 26. Then he won it second year in a row ahead of Pereira. And Harry Kane finally got nominated at the age of 32 to win the Ballon d'Or. Didn't get there, though. Um, Usman Dembele has finally won it at the age of 29 ahead of Pinamonte. And, of course, Pereira. So there's some other things that we can have a look at here, though. Other awards. Uh, goalkeepers of the Year. That's kind of an interesting one. Neuer. No surprise. Neuer, Terstegen, Courtois, Oblak, Courtois, Oblak, 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 <laughs> Ruli. So no regens. Oh, look, there's a region. I think that might be the only region that we've had on this list uh, in this entire save. Only one regen has been... What the hell? Okay, so yeah, a regen has been nominated for Goalkeeper of the Year. But it's this guy, Dimba, who plays... For, oh, for Watford. Damn it! Damn it, damn it, damn it. I was just about to be like, oh my god, we could sign this guy. He plays for a Brazilian club, and he's just signed for Watford for £11 million. Oh, that was last season. Okay. Um, that's so weird to see a Brazilian team's player make a, a shortlist like that. That's actually very, very impressive for him to do that. I don't know quite why he was nominated. Um, he's not even got any caps for Brazil. I don't... Why did he get nominated along with these guys? I, I don't really understand it, but hey, I, I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying. Footballers of the year. It's usually a fairly similar kind of turn up for the books. I just want to kind of grow Suarez, Suarez, Messi. If you see any regens, Dybala, Griezmann, Mbappe. There's one, Juan Pereira, of course, uh, sneaking up on him there. And he's, he's always been around, but he's not actually won it. It's usually the same types of players that make this one. World player of the year. The, what's the difference? Um, Are they all the same? They all appear to be the same. Practically. I assume they just shuffled around in some way. Juan Pereira. There he is again. Mbappas, uh Juan Pereira. And yep, he's still around. World Player of the Year. So World Team of the Year. Okay. This one actually could be a fascinating little thing to take a look at. So for the first season, Suarez, any kind of weird players. I want to see any kind of weird clubs getting teams into this team. Um, not weird clubs, but just slightly underrepresented clubs, perhaps. Because Shelby getting in it this year is kind of interesting, I have to say. Um Anyone else from this? Not really. This is all the same clubs pretty much every season, it's looking like anyway. Um, trying to see. Arsenal is literally the, the sort of most obscure club in here, and that's Arsenal for crying out loud. Um, yep, yeah, all, all very, very similar here. 
along the way. Dortmund player Belotti finally got in there, which would explain... You know, he did win the Ballon d'Or, I think. Um, anyone else? Spurs player Toby Alder... Toby Alderweireld won, got into the World Team of the Year in 2023. How old is he now? He's a reserve team manager at Mets. That's how old he is. Um, so there's that. Uh, anyone else particularly interesting along this line? No, not really. It's the same. It's literally the same player. Oh, that's all seasons as well. Um, God, Jesus. Some of these goal scoring records are absolutely bloody absurd, aren't they? Uh, anything else? Award voting? No, that's kind of that. So we've got the World Cup and the European Championships left to talk about. Uh, if I could just remember how to get to those, that would be bloody lovely. Uh, we've got World Cup. We'll do the World Cup first. So, well, we can already see here. So... Belgium won the 2018 World Cup. That was the prediction from FM from this save. Spain then won. And then Holland, of all people, have won a World Cup. That is actually quite marvellous. Uh, oh, wait. Can we not get like a... I wish you could just... Is there like a tree? Can we look at the second round? There we go. So Holland beat Croatia 4-1 in the final uh, after being Italy. Are there any sort of surprise teams in here? No, Sweden beat Brazil 3-0 after extra time. They managed to score three goals in extra time against Brazil. That is actually somewhat impressive, I have to say. Previous time around, Spain beat Germany 1-0 in the final. After beating Denmark 4-2 in the semi, Uruguay reached um, their own semi with Switzerland being knocked out. Anyway, Canada, re read this correctly, Canada reached the, the second round of the World Cup, but being knocked out fine by Uruguay, but they reached the second round of the World Cup, which means that... I want to see what group Canada are in. They got through a group that had Chile and Australia in. Canada coming up in the world. I guess it's because we had so many regions uh, available for them to pick from. So someone like your Oli Ikkenens in the future, Canada might do quite well at the next World Cup. Dr. Congo qualified for it, which is kind of cool. No real huge surprises. E Egypt qualified top of a group that had Brazil in it. So there's that as well. Uh, that's actually quite cool to see as well. Let's see what it predicted for this year's current World Cup. Obviously, uh, the groups are going to be all wrong and have the wrong teams and whatnot in them, but it's still kind of interesting. Poland qualified in a group with Senegal, uh, which actually was kind of close. Weren't they in the same group in real life? I've, no, they were. Actually, I'm not sure. If they, I think they were, weren't they? Um, Spain and Argentina came through their group with Croatia. Belgium and England qualified from their group. Wow, it's weird that Belgium and England were in the same group as well with the USA in there. Portugal and Peru qualified in a group with Honduras and Wales. There you go. France and South Korea got out of a group with Mexico and Algeria and Holland and Bosnia and Herzegovina got out of a group with Uruguay and Japan. Germany and Chile got out of their group and Italy and Brazil got out of their... Ireland qualified as well. So Ireland, Wales and England all got into the World Cup. Um, England were the only one that got through, but still, that's nice to see, isn't it? Um, one final thing. We'll take a little look at the... If I can remember where the hell it is uh european championships this is gonna be the one yeah so we've had belgium win it and we've had italy win it and we'll have another one next summer um which of course will probably be won by uh, belgium have won the world cup and the the european championships that's actually fairly impressive so we'll go back to this one go to the second round and we'll put it in the trees so we can have a little gander here italy beat croatia 3-0 croatia have done so well wales did get through to the second round though to be fair to them uh, Norway, Romania in there as well. Kind of interesting. I want to see who else qualified. We'll take a look. Bosnia and Herzegovina reached the sem reached the world uh, blah, blah, the European Championship finals. That is very impressive to see. Anyone else? No one that interesting. Austria did all right as well. Uh, okay, let's take a look at the groups. I'm always interested to see who qualifies for these things these days and see who gets out of their group. So Georgia got there, which is kind of interesting. Scotland didn't get out of their group, unfortunately. Uh, Finland came bottom. Macedonia qualified for it as well. Greece and Ireland in their group. Uh, Turkey also qualified. Okay, let's see about the most recent one. Wales top their group. Well done them. Slovenia and Switzerland go out. Czech Republic are in there. Uh, anyone new? Not really. Um, kind of a similar kind of batch of that. So that's kind of how the world is looking in this save after 10 years. Nothing groundbreaking particularly happening. Um, unless you count Norway flipping the title back and forth like a hacky sack. But So there is that. Um, we're going to wrap it up here. It's been about half an hour in this video and my voice is really starting to crack. So if you have enjoyed this, and I would say if you want to see this after 20 seasons, but I'm not sure we're going to get to 20 seasons into this save uh, before FM19 comes a rolling around. But I might do another one at the end of that save when things all kind of calm down. So if you do want to see that, drop a like on the video and just drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed this little look at the world. It's not the sort of video I'd normally do, but you guys wanted it, so here we go. Um, 
yeah, and subscribe to the channel if you're new, and this is the first video of mine you've seen, which uh, you never know it might be. Watch the rest of the save. It's really good, I promise. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode with some transfer window goodies with B67. The reason we're really here. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.